third video in our series showing you how to use the CDC Excel tool for thematic analysis. In this video, I will show you how to format your text data and how to bring it into the coding workspace so that we can code it in the next step. In order to code your text easily, you will need to formulate your text so that every space that you want to code is in its own row of the coding workspace sheet. You will first accomplish this by formatting your text in, the word, in a word processing program such as Word, and then taking some additional steps within Excel. Using the example of a focus group from a fictitional disease that we'll call disease X, I'm going to show you how to format this data so that it can be easily copied into the Excel tool. When you first paste your text into Word, the document may not have had any formatting or may be formatted into paragraphs the way that this example is. So that every sentence becomes its own row when we copy it into the tool, you will insert a carriage return by hitting enter at the end of every sentence. I've skipped ahead so that now this has been done for each of the sentences in the transcript. So now you can see that each sentence is on its own line and has had a carriage return or an enter space added after it. This manual process works well for short transcripts, for longer transcripts with multiple pages, you may use the find and replace function to automatically add a carriage return for you. See section number three of the user guide for detailed steps on how to complete this. You can also avoid the step entirely if, when you transcribe the data, you build in carriage returns at the end of each sentence. An additional step that you might want to take if your text has facilitator questions or other prompts that you would like to retain along with each statement is to bold the question or prompt so that it's easier to find once you copy the data into Excel. This is what your example text will look like after taking this optional step. This can be important because when you import the text into Excel, the text in bold can be moved to a separate column and the prompt can be linked to each individual sentence below it. Having a question or prompt next to the statements that correspond to it can be helpful while you're interpreting and coding the data. So once you've formatted your text so that it generally looks like either of the examples I've shown you, you're ready to paste the text into Excel. To paste in the text, you will copy all of the text that you want to move from Word into Excel, and then open your coding workspace sheet. So once you're in the coding workspace sheet, you'll click into the first row of the text sentences column, and now you should be able to paste the text in the first blank cell, and the sentences will then automatically fill with below with one sentence in each row. You may also want to select the wrap text function under the home um, tab so that the text will show up on multiple lines in each cell. Now, if you have taken the additional step of noting the questions and prompts in bold and would like them to appear next to each statement, you will need to copy each question or prompt from the text sentences into the interviewer's questions section heading. You can then delete the row that the original prompt was in since you probably won't be coding it. And then you can copy it down to each of the segments that it corresponds to. So as you can see, I've skipped ahead and now all of the questions are next to each statement. One column that we haven't used yet is the file ID column. This file ID corresponds to information from the transcript log sheet that I showed you in the previous video. And this allows for the easier inclusion of details about the text collections. So once you've copied the text into these rows on the coding workspace, what you wanna do is fill in the file ID column with the same ID from the transcript log sheet table. So in our case, we're using the file that came from the disease underscore FG. And so the file ID that we want, want is one. So we'll go back to our coding workspace. We'll put in ones here, and we can copy these all the way down for all of our text from this particular transcript. And what you can see happens is in the file name and participant type, 
information is now being automatically pulled from the transcript log sheet into the coding workspace. This will be useful um, in the pivot table section when you may be interested in stratifying your codes based on some demographic information. You can see that the file name and participant type are already included in this sheet, but you may want to include some additional information. For example, if we would like to include the type of event, we would insert a new column and then type the header name, making sure that the name matches exactly what was in the tracking column called type of event. So we'll right click, go to insert, and then we can choose table columns to the left. We'll rename this type of event because that's what it's called on the transcript log sheet. And then we will just copy the cell um, D5 over into column C. And this should auto update with the type of event, which in this case was focus group. So once you understand the steps for setting up and importing text data into the tool, you can move on to how to code your data in the sheet as covered in the next video.